Hi everybody and welcome to A Case of the Jills. So today's video is going to be on a topic that I received a lot of emails about when I took a little bit of a hiatus. I had done a blog post recently on acaseofthejills.com that had to do with exercise addiction. And it seemed that that topic really resonated with a lot of people. Let's just go out and say it. I think it rang a lot of alarm bells in people's heads. So last semester, I had the opportunity to take a class called Emotions with Dr. Matthew Leeds. Most of you know that I study at Harvard University Extension School. One of the assignments in that class for the graduate students was to do a literature review on a topic of interest. I am really interested in something called maladaptive coping mechanisms. Maladaptive coping mechanisms are what happens when we use something to cope with uncomfortable emotions that tends to actually create negative effects in the long run. Gee, I wonder why that was interesting to me. So I decided to do my literature review paper on endurance exercise as a coping mechanism, which ends up being a maladaptive coping mechanism. Given my history, I was really interested to unpack the topic and understand how and why it is that people feel compelled to use exercise as a way of managing stress and uncomfortable emotions. Of course, I have had a negative outcome from that and I wanted to dig in to see if that experience is just very specific to me or perhaps if lots of other people experience the same thing. I mean, that's the purpose of this channel, right? To sort of dig into this concept and see where we went wrong and how to make it better. So the interesting part about this is that exercise is associated with good mental and physical health outcomes. There's a myriad of studies that will attest to this. There's so many I wouldn't even be able to cite them all. We know that exercise is good for body and mind. However, there is a limit, as there is to most things. There does come a point where the positive benefits that we get from exercise peak and then start to turn downward into negative effects. So I kind of knew a little bit about this. I knew how to talk about overtraining syndrome, you know, pushing that physical part too much. But what I didn't understand was the connection to exercise addiction. I wanted to know, are the mindsets for exercise addiction in place before we start doing exercise or do they come about after? Basically a chicken or an egg problem here. So this was the topic for my paper and I want to share with you three of the most shocking findings that I was able to discover doing the research for this paper. Shocking finding number one, and if you've read my blog, you will see that this information is there as well. People who are addicted to exercise suffer the same kinds of consequences as people who are addicted to substances like drugs and alcohol. This information I actually grabbed from a study that was done by Chen in 2016. The name of the study is Frequent Exercise, Healthy Habit or Behavioral Addiction. Things like salience, mood modification, tolerance, withdrawal and relapse are all things that you find with substance abuse. Same thing with exercise addiction. So for example, salience is when you're thinking about that thing all the time. Training is the number one thing in your life. It's your number one priority and you're committed to moving anything around to make sure that you get to do it. Mood modification. You start to understand that you feel crappy before you train and you feel better after you train. Therefore, you must train. Tolerance. The more you do it, the more you need to do it to get the same high. Withdrawal. If you don't do it, you feel like crap. And relapse. Despite maybe injury or illness, you just can't help yourself. I was blown away when I read this. I could see myself in every single one of those pieces of the puzzle. I couldn't believe that the things that I always associated with substance abuse, a, a, a chemical addiction, were things that I saw in myself when I reflect on my running career. Okay, so this information had a lot to do with um, our habits and mindsets and thoughts, but digging into the information more, I was actually able to find differences in our brains. So shocking finding number two. It turns out that exercise addiction is associated with frontal brain asymmetry, also just like substance abuse. This study was done by Gapin, Ednier, and Tucker. The name of the study is The Relationship Between Frontal Brain Asymmetry and Exercise Addiction. So what was found is that when you looked at brain scans of people who are addicted to exercise, they actually have one side of the frontal lobe that lights up more than the other side. What's very interesting though is that the frontal brain asymmetry is actually reversed whether it's exercise addiction or substance addiction. So it turns out that people with substance abuse have more activity in the right front brain. This part of the brain is more associated with avoidance behaviors so that people are using substances to sort of 
blunt emotion or blunt feelings. It's actually reversed in people with exercise addiction. There's more activity in the left front of the brain. Activity in this part of the brain is associated with approach behaviors. So what's happening here is that people are motivated to engage with the sport. The act of doing exercise and training is actually working to generate those uh, moods that they need to regulate whatever is going on inside them that's uncomfortable. Rooted in the beginning of my research was the question of do we have uncomfortable emotions and then go exercise to manage them or do we exercise and then realize that we cannot manage emotions without it? Shocking finding number three, turns out both are true. Even if you do not come to endurance exercise for emotion regulation, it turns out that you will end up needing the exercise to manage your emotions anyway. So let me break this down for you. When you do a lot of endurance training, what you end up getting are endorphins and neurotransmitters. These end up being opioid-like peptides that give you that good runner's high, happy mood feeling. You get a decrease in pain sensation, an increase in pleasure. You get increased appetite, energy, and alertness. Basically, you feel awesome. Some people realize that they need emotion regulation and so they turn to exercise to kind of manage that because they know that after they're done exercising they feel much better. They feel that they're, uh, they've processed whatever is sort of wrong in their life or whatever's making them feel bad and that the running is the thing or the endurance training is the thing that helps them manage that. Other people come to start training, they're kind of fine, they don't really have emotional disturbances or they don't feel that they need emotional regulation. They come to sport, they start training, and then they you know, move into endurance training. When they stop, they realize that they feel crappy. What's happening is that those opioid peptides are creating a real chemical addiction in the body. That dependence is what motivates people to continue to run even when um, they stop, they're gonna feel terrible, they get that low because they're not having that rush of chemicals in their brain and so they're motivated to continue to exercise. You could find this study, it's uh, Marquez, Saguero, and Molinero and actually the name of the study is Exercise Addiction in Practitioners of Endurance Sports. I'm gonna link all the studies below so you can take a look yourself if you'd like to. I don't know about you but I was pretty shocked when I read all this stuff. When I wrote the paper, when I started to write the paper, I really did not think that I was going to be writing about exercise addiction in this way. I thought I was going to be writing about it from a hypothetical. I thought maybe some of the information that I was going to pull in would have been um, anecdotal. Runners or other endurance athletes talking about their experiences with exercise addiction. I did not know that there was going to be um, neurological studies and that we were going to find that there were um, opioid peptides that were creating a chemical dependence in the body. I know this is probably a little bit naive of me, but this is why I'm in school. Along with this, I actually also researched a lot of other information about why endurance exercise seems to be so compelling, why it is that endurance exercise has all these components that make it the perfect storm for creating exercise addiction. What was very interesting about the emails that I received is that they were they were frustrated, they were heartfelt, they were um, from people that really felt like they were kind of at the end of their rope with this. They felt that they didn't have control over their desire and need, sorry, their need to exercise. If you're watching this channel, chances are this resonates with you. Maybe you've had a brush with this yourself. I know that I did. You might say that I had it easy because uh, overtraining syndrome symptoms made it necessary for me to stop no matter what I wanted to do. But there are people for whom the physical consequences of overexercise have not caught up to them yet and they're really looking for a way out. No matter what, I want you to watch this video and know that you're not alone. I got tons of emails from people all over the world doing all kinds of sports from track and field to hockey to tennis, yoga, all kinds of different sports where people felt as though they were clinging to training as the only way they can manage their life. If you're interested in this topic, I would really like to hear from you. Either give this video a thumbs up or leave a comment below. Let me know if you'd like me to continue to explore this with you and share more findings from my research and some of the other research that's out there. I hope that this video um, is helpful. I hope it helps you see a few things maybe even in your own life. I hope you have a great day wherever you are and I will see you. It looks like I'm gonna see you again soon. Thanks for watching.